In worksheet 3.4, the first question says, what is the difference between a polar bond and a polar molecule? So a polar bond, it's a bond that is formed by two atoms. So for example, hydrogen and chlorine. And what happens is that one of the two atoms is more electronegative than the other one. It's actually their difference in electronegativity. So the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms in that polar bond, it's higher, higher than 0.4. So what does that mean? What it means is that there is one of the two atoms in the bond that is way more electronegative, meaning that it attracts the shared electrons way more than the other one. That's why we draw an arrow on top of the bond and we point that arrow towards the most electronegative atom. In this case, for this bond, chlorine is the most electronegative, meaning that that pair of electrons that they share in this bond that is just reflected with the, with the um, line that we represent as a bond, that, that those pairs of electrons are more attracted by the chlorine than the hydrogen, okay? That's why there is a big electronegativity negativity difference and that's why we call this bond polar. But again, it's a bond between two atoms. A polar molecule, it's a different, no, it's not a different thing, but it's, it's a different concept. So a polar molecule is a molecule. So it's a molecule that has one side of the molecule that is more electronegative or more negative than the other side of the molecule. So for example, H2O is a polar molecule. We have learned that already, right? H2O is a polar molecule because of the dipole arrows add up. So they go up like this because of the electronegativity values on each of the bonds. And there's altogether what we call a net dipole moment, okay? Also, the water molecule has these two pairs of electrons over there that makes the one area of the molecule more negative than the other one. So for the water molecule specifically, there is one area of the molecule that is this area of the molecule that is more negative, and then there is another area of the molecule that is more positive, okay? So that is a polar molecule. A polar molecule is a molecule that has an imbalance in the charge of the, of the atoms all together, okay? Question two. What is the difference between the electron geometry and the molecular geometry? Okay, so the electron geometry, the electron geometry, it's going to be describing the arrangement of the all the electron domains in a molecule. So it's the arrangement, arrange of all the electron domains in the atom. All electron domains in the molecule. Meaning what? Meaning that, for example, if I have the water molecule again, the water molecule has the one lone pair, another one, so two, and then one bond and another one bond. So it has four electron domains. So the electron geometry for the water would be tetrahedral. The molecular geometry, it's the geometry that only describes or determines where the atoms are. Only the atoms. Where the atoms are. So it only focuses on the bonds. So for the water molecule, the molecular geometry is only going to be focusing on the atoms that are bonded to the central atom. So it's going to be focusing on this geometry over here. That's why for the water molecule, we say it's bent. So again, electron geometry looks at all the electron domains and the shape that they form. And the molecular geometry only looks at the bonds, at the atoms in the shape that they form. Okay, so for activity three, we are going to draw some loose structures and then find the molecular geometry, the bond angle, and the polarity of those molecules. So for the water, we have done it plenty of times. So let's do it one more time. The water molecule looks like this. If you draw the loose structure, you have the oxygen in the middle. Then you have two hydrogen atoms like this. And then you have two lone pairs, two lone pairs around the central atom that make the central atom a more negative area, okay? And this, these two lone pairs also push the uh, bonds down, so they reduce the, the bond angle. So if we focus on the molecular geometry, remember molecular geometry only focuses on the geometry described by the bonds, by the atoms. So we would be looking at this, okay? So the molecular geometry for the water is called bent. It's bent because it's actually a bent angle, okay? The bond angle in the water molecule because the, the, this molecule is a, in a, it has a tetrahedral electron geometry, it's going to be 109.5 degrees, okay? 
And then for the polarity, we said the other day that we know that the dipole moments add up, so they don't cancel out. So we have a net dipole pointing upwards, okay? And also the water molecule has lone pairs in the central atom. So those are factors that determine that the water molecule is going to be polar. Now, the boron, boron trifluoride. So the boron trifluoride has a loose structure that looks like this. You have the boron in the center, and then you have one, two, and three borons. And remember, borom is happy with three bonds, so it doesn't need eight electrons around. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. This is how the loose structure looks for the boron trifluoride. Now, the molecular geometry is going to be the geometry described in the space that the that is described by the atoms, by the bonds. So if we look at this, this is a triangle that it's forming a plane. So that's why this is called triagonal planar. Triagonal planar. Because it's a triangle in a plane, okay? And the bond angle between the bonds here, this bond angle over here, it's going to be, the bond angle, it's going to be 120 degrees, okay? To look at the polarity of this molecule, you can look at the uh, dipole arrows. And if you look at the dipole arrows, let me erase this a little bit so that we can see it better. The arrows are going to be pointing outwards, okay, in this direction, this direction, in this direction. So they cancel each other out. But also... If the molecule is symmetrical, like this molecule, so regardless how you turn it or you, you move it, it's exactly the same, the molecule is going to be nonpolar, okay? And also, if you have a molecule with a central atom and all the atoms around the central atom are the same, the molecule is going to be nonpolar, okay? So multiple reasons that explain to you why this molecule is nonpolar. Again, it does not have any lone pairs in the central atom, all the atoms around the central atom are the same and the dipole moments cancel out and it's a symmetrical mo molecule, so that, that makes it nonpolar. For the NH3, we have to draw the Lewis structure by putting the nitrogen in the center and then we have one, two, three hydrogen bonds and then we have a lone pair here. That's the Lewis structure. So that's why it's important that you know how to do Lewis structures because otherwise you won't be able to continue. For the molecular geometry, remember the molecular geometry only is the one that is described by the bonds. So this is what it describes in the space, okay? So it's called triagonal pyramidal, okay? So it's going to be triagonal pyramidal. And for this type of molecules that have four electron domains because it has the lone pair and then one, two, and three bonds, so four electron domains and therefore electron domains and therefore an electron geometry that is tetrahedral the bond angle is always 109.5 if we want to look at the polarity look if the if we focus on that the nitrogen has a lone pair in the central atom that tells us that is polar also if we look at the dipole arrows all of them are going to be pointing towards the nitrogen pointing towards the nitrogen, so they add up. So there is a net dipole moment, so that's why this molecule is polar. Next molecule, the carbon tetrachloride. So the carbon tetrachloride, it's a molecule that has the carbon in the center, carbon in the center, and then one, two, three and four, chlorines around, okay, with their pairs over here, okay, so this molecule has four electron domains, it has four things around the central atom, which are four I bonds, so four electron domains, and then if we actually look at the Molecular geometry, that is the geometry described by the bonds. So a molecule like this one, it's going to have a, a molecular geometry that is called tetrahedral. Don't 
So molecules are tetrahedral. In this case, both the molecular geometry and the electron geometry are tetrahedral, have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. And if we look at the polarity, any molecule that has no lone pairs in the central atom and that has all the atoms around the central atom that are the same, that's going to be non-polar, okay? Besides that, if you do the dipole arrows, all of them point outwards and all of them will cancel each other out, okay? So this molecule is going to be non-polar. Let's go for CO2. We have already done this one before, but let's do it again. So if you do the Lewis structure of the CO2, it looks like this. So it looks like you have the carbon and then you have two oxygens here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is the Lewis structure. So this molecule has two electron domains. What the two double bonds that it has around the, the central atom. So two electron domains. So for the two electron domains over here, because there's no lone pairs, the molecular geometry in the in the electron geometry is going to be the same. So the molecular geometry is linear. Now, if we look at the bond angle, the bond angle is going to be from here to here, so 180. And finally, this molecule has two dipole arrows pointing outwards and also has two atoms around the central atom that are exactly the same. And also it doesn't have any lone pairs in the central atom. So it's a symmetrical molecule. So this molecule is non-polar. And finally, the sulfur dichloride we do the electron, sorry, we do the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure looks like this. It's similar to the water. You have the sulfur here, and then you have the chlorines, and then lone pair and lone pair. Two lone pairs are around the central atom. So this molecule, because it has the two lone pairs and the two bonds around the central atom, has four electron domains, okay? But if we look at the molecular geometry only, the molecular geometry is going to be like for the water, it's bent because it's the geometry described only by the bonds. So it's bent. And then because it has four electron domains and it has a an electron geometry that is tetrahedral, we know that the angle is going to be 109.5 degrees. And finally, same reason as or reasoning as we use for the water. This molecule has lone pairs in the central atom, okay? So because it has lone pairs in the central atom, that makes the molecule polar. That makes this molecule more negative in this area than in on the other side of the molecule. So just summarizing. For these molecules, what you need to do is you need to always do the Lewis structure first. When you do the Lewis structure, you need to understand how many electron domains the molecule has around it, okay? Electron domains are the lone pairs and the bonds. Now, you look at the molecular geometry and electron geometry. The molecular geometry is the geometry that is described only by the bonds. The electron geometry is described by both the lone pairs and the bonds. So depending on how many electron domains you have, you will have a different geometry. For each of those geometries, you have a different bond angle. Okay, and then the polarity is described based on whether the molecule has lone pairs in the central atom or whether the molecule has dipole arrows that cancel out or add up.